Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I want to take this time and greet the family of what in faith all over the world who are watching this uh, live broadcast this morning. And I also want to welcome everyone who has decided to be with us at this service today. I'm very, very excited because I know that the God that we serve, he does not change. And I want to remind you that even though that the world is shaken, the world is in a turmoil, but heaven is not in a mode of uh, panic. There is still peace in heaven. So I believe after this message this morning, your faith is going to be revived. You are going to be motivated because when the word of God comes, it's like water that comes and water the ground, refreshing the ground. The word of God is going to refresh you this morning. I want to thank the seven and apostle of God, my spiritual father, who has allowed me and gave me his blessings to come and share the word of God this morning. I do not take it lightly. I take it as a great honor for me to be afforded such a, a big platform. Thank you very much, Baba and Mama, wherever you are watching this program. I will be forever grateful to what you have done for me uh, today. Um, as I indicated that we are here to hear the word of God. Straight away, we are going to go and read from the word of God. Our scripture, we are going to be taking from the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. The Bible reads, Study the word of God, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Let us pray as we invite God to take over. Father, we thank you this morning, even as we are ready to share your word. Father, I want to thank you. These are your people. You know their hearts. You know their needs. May you touch them, Lord. Speak through my mouth. Holy Spirit, I decrease as you increase that you may continue to teach us. I hand over to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Where we have just read, the Bible is very clear. This is God speaking, addressing a young man by the name Joshua when he was ready to lead the people. Now God was advising him to say, if you are going to lead people successfully, you need to be successful yourself because it takes the one who leads to cause those who are following uh, to partake whatever he carries. He was saying to Joshua, study this book of instruction continually. This is the book of instruction. The other versions are saying this is the book of the law. So instructions or law, they are not debatable. 
you either do or you don't do. Instructions are there to be obeyed. Study this book of instruction. It was very clear. He didn't say read this book because there is a big difference between reading and studying. When you study, I mean, when you read, you read to be informed. You read to get information, just like reading a newspaper. A newspaper does not transform you. It's just to get information to know what is happening around you. But studying, you study to discover. You study to find out. You study to see something. You study to experience something. You study to encounter something. God was literally saying to Joshua, there is something in this book that will make you successful. But you can only find it when you study the book. Meditate on it day and night. Think through it so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. God gave him a guarantee that if you study this book, you will discover success. You will discover prosperity. You will encounter success. In all you do, you will be successful. Study it. And someone who may argue and say, God was talking to Joshua. I'm not Joshua. I was not living at that time. Times are different. Times have changed. So it does not apply to me. I'm educated. I can do things on my own. But I want to shock you this morning by taking you to the book of Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13, verse 37. Hear the words of Jesus. The Bible reads, What I say to you, I say to everyone. Which means God, when he speaks to an individual, he's not just addressing that individual. When God speaks to one person, he's speaking to multitudes. He's seeing generations to come. I believe when God was speaking to Joshua, he was seeing us. In 2020, he was speaking to us. Because he knew that this Bible is from everlasting to everlasting. This book does not expire. This book can apply to any generation. So he was speaking to us. So if God said, if you want to prosper, you must study this book, that means he is speaking to us today. Study this book of instruction. Only then you will prosper and succeed. Someone said a very interesting, made a very interesting statement. He said, we walk by common sense. We run by principles. But we only fly by instructions. Instructions, when you obey them, they will take you higher. They will make you fly. I believe if we do it, we are going to fly. A simple example. God spoke to the servant and apostle of God many years. When he called him, this is what he said to him. He said, fear not, sin not. We were not there. But it doesn't mean that that message does not apply to us. God was speaking to him because he was the man that was there before him. So, if we disregard those words, we live carelessly, 
we are grounded. But those who take care of those words and say, as long as I'm in this church, I must obey what God said to his servant. I must walk in the fear of God. I must walk in righteousness. I must maintain a holy life. Those who paid attention to those words, they are living a good life today. They are successful. Hallelujah. So, uh, the word of God is true. It will never fail. Jesus said, thy word is truth. Now, as I was reading this scripture, I was very excited. Then I went further to dig. I'm going to share with us some of the reasons, even uh, that uh, qualify what God said to Joshua. When we study the word of God, something that happens to us, when we study the word of God, you realize that, in fact, it's for our benefit. It's not a punishment. Some people, when they see the Bible is so big, they think, how will I finish this book? But listen to this. Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse number 16. Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse number 16. The Bible says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. This is one of the reasons why we must study the word of God. As I'll be teaching, that's my topic. Why must we study the word of God? This is one of the scriptures that shows us that when we read the word of God, the word of God is designed for profitable living. It is designed to prosper us. We profit by reading the word of God, by studying the word of God. It says all scripture, all scripture, all scripture, the whole counsel of God is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, is profitable, is designed to profit us. And this is supported by the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. Isaiah 55, verse 11. The Bible says, In the same, it is the same with my word. I send it out, and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to and it will prosper everywhere I send it. This is not guesswork. God himself he says, my word, that I send it out. It always produces fruit. It always prospers. And it will accomplish all I want it to. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. Everywhere I send it. There is no place where the word of God cannot prosper. The word of God can prosper in any country, in any nation, in any generation. It can prosper in China. It can prosper in the West. It can prosper in Africa. The more committed one is to its principles, the more profitable life becomes. Because God, the word of God is milk, is everything, is honey, is water, is meat, is strong meat, and therefore able to meet all our physical needs. That's the word of God. That's one of the reasons that we need to study it, because it's designed to profit us. 
We are not losing by studying the word of God. We don't remain stranded by studying the word of God. The second reason that I discover that uh, is a very good reason for us to study the word of God is in the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verses 7 and 8. Psalms 19, verses 7 and 8. The Bible says, The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring and refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are reliable and trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Whoa, this is a powerful scripture. The word of God is perfect, reliable, and dependable. That's the second reason why we must study the word of God. It's because it's perfect. It's flawless. Reliable and dependable. You can rely upon the word of God. It's not like the words of people. Tomorrow they say, today they say this, tomorrow they have changed. Even the, the, the books that we are reading, you will hear that this is volume one, volume two, volume three. That means they saw the first volume they, they've written that, no, they, 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 they did not include something. They need to remove something there. But this one is volume one forever. It's perfect. It does not have, it does not need any modification. It's reliable, dependable. I like what the servant of God says in one of his books. Our father, he says, the word of God is sincere, honest, and wholesome. Sometimes people even Believers take the word of God for granted, and yet God's word contains all we need. Our salvation is in the word. Our rebirth is in the word. Eternal life, healing, deliverance, sanctification, inheritance, spiritual growth, even the faith to believe the word comes through hearing God's word. God's word abides forever. This is very true. This is very true. If we read 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Having, born, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Which lives and abides forever. This is exactly what the servant of God has written in his book. And if you read again, Isaiah 40, verse 8, the Bible says, The grass with us, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Stands forever. You need to read a book like that. That stands forever. The word of God is the same, just like God. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Even during coronavirus, God has not changed his word. Even 20 years to come, the word of God will be still the same. I think it's a good reason for us to study this word. The word that will never disappoint tomorrow, us tomorrow. The word that you are sure that tomorrow you'll find it there. The last reason that I thought is a very good reason for us to study the word of God is in the book of Psalms 119 verse 8. Psalms 119 verse 8. David says, Open my eyes that I may see wonders 
that I may see wondrous things from your law. This was one of the greatest kings in Israel. He said, open my eyes, that I may see wondrous things from your law. The Bible is a book of wonders. It's full of wonders. The Bible is different from any other book. Every other book is made up of letters. And they are all designed to inform us, to give us information. But this book called the Bible, the book of instruction, is made up of wonders, and they are packaged to transform us, to transform us, to change our position. Because if you look at the Bible, you see wonders. Actually, you see God. Because the Bible says God is wonderful. He's a God of wonders. He's a wonder-making God. You see wonders. You see life. You see miracles. You, 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 you'll be amazed of the things that are in the Bible. When you study it, you forget other things because you see wonders. You yourself, you become a wonder. People, they wonder what happens to you. You become a wonder. This Bible transforms people. This Bible changes people. I think that's a good reason for us to study the Word of God, for us to study the Bible. We don't remain the same when we study the Bible. We become super being. We become stronger. Our faith is elevated. It's a book of wonders. It's a book of wonders. Right now, I just want us to look at some of the things that we encounter when we study the Word of God. Even beyond the reason, but there are certain things that as individuals, when we study the Word of God, we we, 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 we come across those things. We encounter certain things in the Bible. Number one, when we study the word of God, the first thing, it may not be first, these things I did not put, you know, according to the order. I just pick up uh, as the Lord was showing me. Number one, we encounter divine light. When we study the word of God, we encounter divine light. Psalms 119 verse 130. Psalms 119 verse 130. The word of God reads, the entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. The entrance of your words give, gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. The word of God is supernaturally illuminative. It enlightens us. We encounter divine light. I'm not talking about the, the light that we see every day. I'm talking about divine light. Divine light. You know what it means when light comes? Light accelerates you. Light gives you victory. Light shatters darkness and shows the way to go. When you see someone who has encountered light, he does not speak like everybody else. Look at our father. Before I talk about him, I just want you to listen to this. Listen to this. Africa, lift your hands to our God, lift your hands to our God, Africa, Africa, lift your hands to our God, lift your hands to our God, lift your hands to our God, Africa, 
Africa. Lift your hands to our God. Lift your hands to our God. Lift your hands to our God. Africa! Africa! Lift your hands to our God. Lift your hands to our God. Africa! Africa! Lift your hands to our God. Lift your hands to our God. Lift your hands to our God. Africa! Africa! Lift your hands to our God. Lift your hands to our God. Lift your hands to our God. When he started this organization, when he started this ministry, there was no bank account, there was no money, there was no church building, there was no church car, there was no vehicle, there was nothing. He was under the gum tree. People were laughing at him. But it did not take time because he encountered light. Light made him to progress. Light gave him wings. We don't talk of Africa today. We are talking of nations. What it caused him to affect nations is not money, it's light. He encountered light. Even when you were listening to him, he says, Africa, lift your hands to God. That's where you are going to find light. Because he has discovered light is the solution to the problems of Africa and the world. He encountered light. Just like David says, I lift my eyes toward the mountains. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. When you study the word of God, you encounter divine light. You meet God himself. You meet God himself. Listen to this. Listen to this. First John chapter, uh, First John chapter one, verse five. First John chapter one, verse five. It says, "This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all." And if we read the book of John chapter one, verses one to four. Verses 1 to 4, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. Light of all mankind. There is no one who is disadvantaged. When you take the word of God, that light will shine upon you. That light will give you wings. That light will make you successful. Divine light. Divine light. Psalms 19 verse 8. We are still talking about light. Psalms 19 verse 8. The Bible reads, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Enlightening the eyes. Your vision becomes broader and clear when you have discovered the light. The light, not the sun, because everybody is walking in the sun. Everybody has the sun but they are still struggling. I'm talking about the higher light, the light. That's why when God wanted to prosper Abraham, he 
said, come out of darkness. Come out from that environment to a place that I will show you. And we see in Genesis 17, in Genesis 17 verses 1 and 2, he says to him, walk before me and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. I will exceedingly bless you. Because when he came out of darkness and he encountered the light, the divine light, he met God. He began to prosper. In Genesis 13 verse 2 it says, Abraham was very rich. Very rich in silver, in cattle, and in gold. But when God brought him, he was poor. He had nothing. You cannot remain the same when you encounter light. Light will elevate you. Light will put you forward. This is the book of light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, the Bible says, But the path of the just is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until it reaches its full strength. When you encounter light, you shine brighter and brighter and brighter. It's from glory to glory. You go up, you go higher, you go higher, you go higher. Hallelujah. That's why the servant of God, he has never went back. He's going forward. He's going forward. He's affecting nations. He's making impact. He has found the light. Even those were laughing at him first. But today they are celebrating him. I tell you, you may be grounded right now. But if you can take this book and marry this book and marry with this book, you will discover light. You will encounter light. That light will prosper you. The second thing that we encounter when we study this book, we encounter divine wisdom. We encounter divine wisdom. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 and 24, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 and 24, it says, But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the, Greeks, to the Greeks, foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. And we know that the Bible tells us that Jesus is the word of God, according to Revelation 19, verse 13. Jesus is the word of God. So if Christ is the wisdom of God, therefore the word of God is the wisdom of God. You cannot separate Christ from his word. If you read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible says, And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. The scriptures, they've got the ability to make you wise. You become wise. For what? For salvation. Salvation means the change of position for the better. So you cannot counter wisdom and remain the same. The Bible says, Wisdom is the principal thing. There is no reigning in life without wisdom. God's word communicates the wisdom of God from above, which positions all of us above, above because it's wisdom from above, wisdom from above. So it positions us from above. Look at this, Psalms 119, verse 97 to 100. 
Psalms 119, verse 97 to 100. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day. Your commandments, your words, make me wiser than my enemies. For your words are always with me. That means you are studying the word of God. I have better understanding and deeper insight than all my teachers because your, your word, because of your word. For your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the aged who have not observed your, pre your precepts because I have observed and kept your precepts. God's word communicates wisdom that positions us above our peers, above our teachers, even above the aged, the word of God. No wonder the disciples and the people during the time of Jesus, whenever he was displaying wisdom, they would say, where did this man get this wisdom? And these mighty works, where did this man get this wisdom? And these mighty works, that is in Matthew 13, verse 54. Matthew 13, verse 54. Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? So the wisdom of God is not in mighty words. The wisdom of God translates into mighty works. When someone claims that I have the wisdom, I have wisdom, we are not really bothered about the good grammar. We want to see things around him. When with the wisdom you become productive, you become productive with wisdom. Wisdom gives you dominion. Wisdom places you above. Look at our father. Nobody can tell that and deny that he does not have wisdom. Look around him. You don't have to ask. You just look around him. Just like Solomon, I remember the queen, queen of Sheba. When he came, when she came, she just saw things happening around King Solomon. And she said, what I heard about your wisdom, it was not enough. It was not mighty words. It was mighty works, results around the man, around King Solomon. Wisdom, wisdom. Look at Proverbs chapter 14. Chapter 24, Proverbs 24, verse 14. It says, in the same way, wisdom is sweet to your soul. If you find it, you will, ha you will have a bright future. And your hopes will not be cut short. Wisdom is sweet to your soul. That's why when you find someone with wisdom, there is always peace around people with wisdom. Look at our father. The ministry is so big. More than 5,000 pastors. Millions of members. But you don't hear of fights and splits and all that. Wisdom is in display. Wisdom is the stability. Wisdom is the sustainer. Wisdom sustains any form of success. When you see businesses crashing, everything collapsing, government going down, no, it's not the lack of resources. It's a lack of wisdom. What is lacking there is wisdom. Wisdom. Zioja has never gone down ever since it started. It's growing. It's moving. What, what causes to grow is wisdom. Wisdom is a sustainer. Your organization will be sustained. 
Your business won't collapse if you find wisdom. That's why it says, if you find it, you will have a bright future. If you find it, you will have a bright future. And your hopes will not be cut short. Number three, the third thing that we encounter when we study the word of God is divine nature. Divine nature. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. It says, by his, by his divine nature, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. For living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know him. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature. To share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. What is divine nature? God's divine nature is, is love. God is love. And love never fails. That means when we partake of his divine nature, we partake of his abilities. We partake of his capabilities. We partake of his capacities. The word of God is pregnant with his divine nature. If I can take you to the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, when he was going to Rome, if you can read this in the book of Acts chapter 28, Acts 28 from verse 3 to 6, Acts 28 from verse 3 to 6, he went to an island where he was bitten by a snake and the people were around him they thought that he was going to die and fall dead. They waited for some minutes, but nothing happened to Paul. He did not swell. He did not collapse. He was just as normal. The Bible says, when they saw that happening, that nothing is happening, they changed their minds and began saying that he was a god. He was a god. His system could not be penetrated by poison. That's why we hear Paul in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. He says, I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me. Only God who speaks like that. Only God who speaks like that. For the Bible says, God is able to do exceedingly above. And Paul is speaking like God because he is partook his divine nature. He believes that his system cannot be affected by many things. Let me tell you, if you study the word of God, even this coronavirus people are afraid of, your system will be able to resist it. Your system will be able to back it off. It will not find landing in your body. In the name of Jesus Christ, once you partake of his divine nature, you become strong. You partake of his strength. You partake of his ability, his capabilities, his capacities. You become like a God. Hallelujah, somebody. This is powerful. This is powerful. Paul, at one time, they stoned him. And they dragged him out of the city. And they left him dead there. But nobody uh, carried him. The Bible says, after a few minutes... He stood up. He shook himself. He was never attended. He did not go to the clinic. He went and he was threatening other people. It's very difficult to die young when you have partook a divine nature. You partake that by studying the word of God. Look at our father. Just watch this again. Watch this. Africa! Africa! Lift your hand to our God. 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 Africa! Africa! Lift your hand to our God. Lift your hand to our God. Lift your hand to our God. 
Lift your hands to our God. Africa! Africa! Lift your hands to our God. 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 Look at him. The man that you are seeing here is not 50 years old, 97 years, but is strong. He's not moving with a, with a stick, people supporting him. Very energetic, still moving, planting churches, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ at 97. What is that? He has partook divine nature. At one time, people were asking him, he says, no, I eat Jesus. I eat Jesus. I eat Jesus. How do you eat Jesus? Through his word. Because Jesus and his word, they are one. I eat Jesus. I eat Jesus. That's why you see him like this. If you can do what he's doing, yourself, you are not going to die at 40, at 30. You will reach 80. You will reach 90. You will reach 100. Don't think about dying this time. When you see all these people that are being mentioned that are dying every day, it doesn't mean that you're going to die. Go to the book. Go to the book and connect to the to his divine nature. Go to the book and connect to his divine nature. Go to the book and connect to his divine nature. To his divine nature. The last thing that we encounter when we uh, study the word of God is God's power. God's power. Divine power. God's power. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. It says, for the word of God is living and active and full of power, making, op making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit. That's the word of God. You need power to be effective. You need power to make impact. You need power to dominate because they are opposition. The witches and the devil and the demons... They are there to oppose you. You need power from above. That's why Jesus says, stay here until you are endured with the power from above. He knew. You don't need power in heaven. You need power here because there is no opposition in heaven. The war is here. You need power. You need power. You need power. How do you generate power? By taking his word. Taking his word. This word is full of power. This word is full of power. It's full of power. The book of John chapter 6 verse 63 says, John 6 verse 63 says, It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak, they are spirit, they, they are life. When we talk of the spirit, we are talking of Power, power, power to resurrect. If the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal bodies. He will inject life. He will revitalize you. He will rejuvenate you. He will quicken you. You will become alive. You will become alive. For the Bible says, I'm not talking about receiving the Holy Ghost. I'm taking you taking the word of God. Let me show you in the book of Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. The Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. It says, Then as he spoke to me, the spirit entered me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. As he spoke to me, the Bible says, As he spoke to me, what entered him? The spirit. Power entered him, and he did not remain seated, and he made him to, to stand. Power will give you motion. Power will drive you crazy. You do things that people will say they are not normal. You, 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 you'll dream big dreams. You, 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 you'll move forward. Power. You need power. You need power. I remember when Peter came to the house of Cornelius. The Bible says, 
when he was still speaking, power fell on them. The Bible said the Holy Spirit fell upon those who had, those who had, not those who were present, those who had. You can be present in the church, but if you are not connected, you don't hear the word. Nothing will fall upon you. Don't be present. Get connected. Get connected. Get hold of the word. The power fell upon them, those who heard the word. When the word, one day the servant of God said something that makes sense. He said, when we preach the word, that's why the one who preaches the word must be filled of the Holy Ghost. When we preach the word, the Holy Spirit blows the word inside the heart. Because if the one who is preaching is, does not have the Spirit of God, is not baptized with the Holy Ghost, it will be like a lecturer. The word will just come and end up in your ears. It will be just a, a information. It will not transform you. But when it comes through the Spirit of God, the Bible says the power will enter you. Holy Spirit will enter you. And that word will become alive inside you. It will come and revive your lungs and quicken your lungs, your liver, your, 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 your everything, your kidneys inside, in the name of Jesus. Even as I speak, somebody is getting quickening, is getting a touch in the name of Jesus Christ. Your lungs are being touched. Your kidneys are being touched. That cancer is dying. That womb cancer is dying. That liver cancer is dying. Because of the word of God. As I'm speaking, the Holy Ghost is just blowing the word inside. Hallelujah. It's blowing the word of God inside. Hallelujah. Those are the points that I gave you. Four points. That when we study the word of God, God the God's word inoculates us with divine light, with the divine wisdom. With the divine nature and divine power. God's power. Glory to God. Now as I conclude, I want to say this. Studying the word of God also helps us to recognize or hear his voice. He says, my sheep hear my voice. God cannot speak outside his word. He speaks through his word. If you want to know the voice of God, study the word. Eat the word. Today, there are so many things that are happening. Voices that are talking, especially in our time. Let me show you how important to hear the word of God. How important that you hear the voice of God. Let me take you to the book of Psalms 29. Psalms 29, verse 4. Psalms 29, verse 4. It says, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Verse 9. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says, Glory. That's powerful. The voice of the Lord is not mere words. It's a powerful voice. It causes the barrel to give birth. God, when, when the voice of God has come, it doesn't matter how many voices told you that you will never Get a child. It doesn't matter how many specialists told you. But when the voice of the Lord comes, it reverses any other voice and causes things to, come, to, to, to happen. If you, if you read uh, Revelation 14 verse 2, Revelation 14 verse 2, it says, and I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of loud thunder. 
And I heard the sound of harpies playing their harps. Hey. Somebody told me that when a lion wants to sleep, he begins to roar 360 degrees. Whoa! 360 degrees. And the voice of a lion travels as far as eight kilometers. What is he doing there? He's sending fear to every animal in the jungle so that he can sleep peaceful. Every animal within the eight kilometer radius, they will begin to take off, running away from the direction when the voice is coming. You see, the lion is, is making 360 degrees so that in every direction, every animal must take off in the jungle. But we have a, a greater lion with us, the lion of the tribe of Judah. His name is Jesus. The Bible says when he speaks, his voice is sounding like many waters. When he speaks, his voice is like a loud thunder. If you allow him to speak from your house, I can guarantee you every demon, every witch, including this coronavirus, his voice is not traveling eight kilometers. He's traveling far. He's a lion of the tribe of Judah. May you hear that voice. I tell you, if you are familiar with that voice and you allow him to speak in your life, you will sleep peaceful. Even during this coronavirus, there is no need for you to panic. Because like I said to you, there is peace in heaven. Heaven is never in a panic mode. Everything is not disturbed in heaven. It's only here on earth. But the good news is that though we are in this world, we are not of this world. We belong far above. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, when Jesus rose from the dead, we were raised together with him and we are seated together with him in heaven far above. Far above principalities and powers. Far above coronavirus. Far above lockdown. Far above the economies of this world. Far above any challenge. Listen to this scripture. Listen to this scripture. In Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Oh, let, let, let's start to Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. Deuteronomy 7. I'm winding up now. Deuteronomy 7, verse 14 and 15. It says, You will be blessed above all the nations of, of, of the earth. None of your men or women will be childless. And all your livestock will bear young. And the Lord will protect you from all sickness. He will not let you suffer from the terrible disease you knew in Egypt. But he will inflict them on all your enemies. That's the voice of the Lord this morning. This is the voice of the lion of the tribe of Judah. He does not speak like a human being. His word cannot go back to him void. His word will always prosper. He is saying to us this morning, you will be blessed above all the nations of the world. None of you shall be childless. He says he will protect us. From all sickness and disease. Listen to this again. The final scripture that I'm reading. Joel 2 verse 25 to 27. Joel 2 verse 25 to 27. It says, I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust ate. The locust, the young locust, the destroying locust, and the devouring locust. My great army that I sent against you. You will have plenty to eat and be satisfied. 
This is what the Lion of the tribe of Judah is saying. I will repay you for the years, for the weeks, for the months that you have been locked down. You will, be, you will have plenty after the lockdown. Don't worry about losing job. Your company is not the one that is caring for you. Your life is in the hands of Jesus. He is saying you will have plenty to eat and be satisfied. You will praise the name of Jehovah your God. Who has dealt wondrously with you. My people will never again be put to shame. I declare this morning that shame is not going to be part of you. Instead of shame, God will decorate you with double honor. He says you will have plenty to eat and be satisfied. He will repay all the things that you have lost in the name of Jesus Christ. Believe this God of Ezekiel. Right now, I am praying for everyone. And this prayer is working. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against everything that is a thorn in your life, even during this corona uh, virus, during this COVID-19, during this lockdown. I release the joy of the Lord. I release the peace of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that fear that is tormenting you. It is not from God. God gives his righteous people boldness. I release the spirit of boldness. I release the spirit of courage. I release the spirit of standing and facing the enemy. In Jesus' name, you are not going to lose. You are not going to die. Don't lose your faith. Hold on. Hold on. He will never leave you. He will not, he never forsake you. I command that sickness to go. I command that spirit of, of stagnation, spirit of poverty, spirit of lack. Go in Jesus' name. That company is not going to go down. That job is not going to go, to go down. You are not going to lose your money. You are not going to lose your job. You are not going to lose your house. In Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, every spirit of sickness, spirit of disease, spirit of cancer, spirit of asthma, spirit of TB, in Jesus' name, I command those ulcers to dry right now, in Jesus' name. Those ulcers to dry right now, in Jesus' name. I command that back ache to stop right now, in Jesus' name. I declare that from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, you are healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I sent upon your family, upon your children, upon your, 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 your business, upon whatever you do, your property, I sent the blessing of the prophet who is alive with us, the prophet Ezekiel. I sent the blessings. I sent the favor that we see upon his life is coming in your family. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Be blessed. From next week, you are going to see a change. Some people, they will phone you even in your home. Business opportunities are going to come. Believe God. Believe God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Before we go, you are there. You have never seen Jesus. You have never received Jesus. You have listened to my message. You have never said yes to Jesus. I'm giving you an opportunity now. Come and receive him. Come and receive him. Even if you once, you were serving God, but now you have big slidden. It's come. It's time now you can come home. He will receive you. He will never deny you. All of you, just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Maybe you want to rededicate your life. You want to receive Jesus for the first time. Raise your hand. I'm praying now. Say after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I know I'm a sinner, but I believe you died for my sins and you rose again. Right now, I open my heart and ask you to come into my heart, forgive my sins, and be my Lord and Savior. Make me your child. Save my life. In Jesus' name, I thank you that now 
I believe that I am your child. My sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Thank you for praying that prayer. The Lord will surely visit you. The Lord will surely be with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah.